I'm back. I'm still alive. It's a cold day today, so I am in the shop. Uh, not that I've been outside a whole lot here recently, but today's like 20 degrees, so it's pretty chilly. Got the uh, rock mass heater uh, going and trying to get things warmed up a bit for us. So uh, we're going to start this chest set today. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to kind of go through how I set up to do the chest set because I'm just going to start turning the pieces. I've already got them, you know, roughed out the cylinders and they're ready to go. Uh, so what I did was I cut two by two walnut and maple pieces and then I took them on the bandsaw and I set my table to 45 degrees and I took the corners off of each one. So then I had an octagon. Then I was able to come over here and set them up in a lathe and turn the whole thing round. And then I was cutting each of the pieces to the length that I need for each of the pieces. And uh, after that, I found center on all 32 pieces, which was fun, uh, because I don't have a really great center finder. <laughs> need to order me a new one. I gave my last one to my dad when I left uh, uh, my hometown and moved up here to KC. So anyway, uh, so I found center on all of them, and then I drilled a half inch deep hole with a Forstner bit, uh, three quarters of an inch diameter hole, a half inch deep into the bottom of every piece. So like, since we're gonna do a pulling today, this is a blank for a pulling, and you can see the little hole in the bottom. And then on here, we have a block in the uh, chuck that has a three quarter inch tenon, and this fits rather tight. There's about a quarter of an inch gap when I can't push it on anymore by hand. And I can just go. And it seats right up there. And I, I turned one pull on just to see how the carbide bits would work on the chest piece because I wasn't sure about, these are all like pointy except for the round one. And the round one's like a half inch in diameter. So it's not very small. Uh, so I wanted to see how I was gonna do. And this is how it came out. But I did have to actually add two other tools, uh, traditional style tools. One was a really small uh, spindle gouge, and then the other one a parting tool. So I'm able to do it with about five of these. I don't think I actually used the bevel piece here. Uh, I may on some of the pieces, though. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there's what a is going to look like in this, but we'll go through the turning process anyway. Uh, so I also made uh, key cards, if you will, uh, template cards of each piece. And I'm going to hold this up for the camera better. And you can see this is a pawn. And then you see the little ticks in the edge of the wood is where I can set a pencil when I hold this up against this piece. And I can mark where each of those lines is. And then I know where to start shaping my piece. There's a lot of different diameters involved in these. So I also made a pair of templates for the different diameters that I'm gonna have to deal with. So I can cut something or be cutting something and set this over here and get down to that size and I'll know when I'm there because this thing will fit all the way on and I'm done with that diameter. So we've got two of those. They go all the way from a half inch up to, I think, two inches uh, in eighth inch increments or something. We'll see. Half, three eighths, or half, five eighths, three quarters, seven eighths, one, one and eighth, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and five eighths, one and three quarters. So this could be one and seven eighths. I forgot to write it on here. I'll have to measure it and write it on there. Uh, but I have all the pieces cut and ready to go. And uh, I have the other templates for the or marking gauges for the other pieces. This is the king and queen. This is the rook and the bishop. And this is the knight and the pawn. Now, if I had been thinking, I would have set this up with the pawn and the rook on here because that's what I'm going to do today. But I put the rook on here and the pawn on here. So next time we'll do the knight and the uh, bishop. And then we'll do the king and the queen. That will be the third video. So the poll was rather interesting. I really didn't expect uh, almost half the people wanted three videos of two each and the almost half wanted uh, one video of six. So what I'm probably going to do is go ahead and do the three videos of two each, but then I'll take the footage of the actual turning process for each one uh, 
and I will like condense it and put all six into one video and release that as a separate video. And then there's going to be a pause because I've got to turn all 36 or all 32 pieces. So once I've got all of them turned, then we'll come back and I'm going to make a board for this because it is a gift for someone. So it's going to be a rather late Christmas gift at this point. But you know, it's the thought that counts, right? <laughs> and this guy does love his chess. So uh, once I do that, uh, we'll get the board made. And I'm still debating on whether I'm just going to make a board or if I'm going to make a board that is a table. I'm kind of going back and forth on that yet. Uh, because I've got some other things that I need to build, like from a house, that I'd like to get onto. Um, so I may shorten it to just the board, but I'm really thinking the table would be the appropriate way to go for this gentleman. Anyway, so without further ado, let's get on to some turning. They don't look that much alike, do they? <laughs> now the collar's a little thick on that one. I like this better. I may make a new blanket and redo that one. Yeah. It happens.
And so there's the first one. Let's see if I can get it where you can see it. There we go. <laughs> so my, my camera's doing something weird. It won't flip the screen. So I'm doing this upside down from my point perspective. So yeah, there's the first uh, walnut pawn. Now, it did turn out uh, just a tiny bit different. Let me get this back into frame. It did turn out just a tiny bit different from the uh, maple one that I've already done. The collar here is thicker on the maple one, so I may end up redoing that. Uh, and by redoing it, I mean I'll have to cut a new blank and return the whole thing, but yeah, things like that happen. It's all right. I think we can make do. Anyway, let's get on to our rook. Okay, so now the rook. First, we gotta get him up there. Something that I forgot to mention is I also have the tip uh, pulled out of the tailstock, uh, the point, so that's just the cup. And that way I just get that little ring on top and I can deal with it. A lot easier than a big hole, anyway. And we're not going to tighten the tailstock just yet because I'm finding that I need to... Uh... Well, that was not too bad. There we go. That kind of levels it off so it's straighter. <laughs> anyway, so uh, the rook, the rook, the rook. Where's my card for the rook? Here it is. Okay, so, you know, I think I'm going to cut this in half because it's going to make it easier to put up there. Give me two shakes. So here's our rook. Let me give you a little better look at him. So you see all the measurements written on there are the different diameters that I need at different spots. So I know what uh, template, diameter template to use at those different spots. So, yeah. Anyway, let's see if I can make a rook. Where'd my pencil go?
And I'm now going to introduce you to one of my Christmas presents. I got a folding Japanese saw. My sister sent me a gift card for Amazon and this is what it got me. It's really nice. I think I'm going to use a Japanese saw. Ta-da! Now just to let you all know, I am taking these over to the belt sander uh, on the other side of the shop and sanding the bottom smooth. So I'm not real concerned about how this turns out, but as you can see they're coming off pretty, uh, pretty decently. So there is our first rook. Not a bad little dude. And the reason I'm not putting any finish on is since it's a chest set and they need to be like recognizable into their two different colors, I didn't want to put any oil on the maple. I may oil these, but I think I'm just going to shoot them all with uh, lacquer and call it good. But there we go. So that's two pieces down. And I will start shooting the next video. Uh, well, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, but hopefully I get, I'll get these all out, like, fairly close together to uh, make it more interesting for y'all. All right. I didn't get to show you guys this last time, but you'll note that the base is still on there and it's stuck and there's really no way to grab it to get it off. And what I've been doing is taking my chisel because it's thin enough that it just cracks off, usually. Of course, now it's going to make a liar out of me. There it goes. And it pries off and then I have a ring but as you see it cracks as you take it off so bing anyway guys thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one we'll see you later